Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome to episode 30 of Action RPG Game in Unity. Right now you need to tap the mouse button to make your character continuously attack or even move. So let's make it possible to just hold the button to move the character or continue attacking the same target. Open player character input. Inside the left mouse button input, create and call a new method called left mouse button hold. Pass the callback context as a parameter. To identify when our button is pressed, create a new variable called is pressed. Inside, when your uh, input action just started, set the is pressed to be true. Otherwise, set it to be false. This will detect when our button is being held. Inside the update, we will create and call a new method LMB hold process command. Inside, if we are holding the button, we will do the attack and we will move the character. Let's test this. Okay, it works, but it works a little awkward. When your attack is on cooldown between the swings, your character is trying to move into the enemy. This is happening because our attack check combines both check for presence of selected target to attack and, and check the cooldown of the attack action. Let's change this by separating them into two different methods. Now we need to call the attack cooldown check with attack check in left mouse button input handle. And in left mouse button hold command process. But here, if we separate them like this, if you have a target but your attack is on cooldown, our character will not attack and not move either. Let's rename is pressed into left mouse button pressed. If you don't know how to must rename, you hold Ctrl and double press R when you have a variable selected. Rename attack check to be attack target check. If you don't use Visual Studio with must rename, make sure the name of your method is updated. And inside input handle, let's extract the process of command into separate method. Good. Let's test to make sure that multiple enemies works. It works fine, there is small issue with switching targets. We will address it in the next episodes where we will be implementing a new command for the characters. 
Ok, what we have implemented broke the interaction system. We cannot interact with the objects anymore. This is happening because those left mouse button hold commands are overriding the interact commands. And if we move the character command over here, it will allow us to mow down the chests. Right now I'm holding my button and as you can see, she is opening all the chests in her way. It is because we call process of the command every frame in the update. It makes you recheck commands every frame, allowing us continuously attack or movement. But on the other hand, it makes the interact command to open all the boxes in her way. So we want to introduce an exception for the interact command. If when you click, you have created an interact command, we don't want to process the left mouse button in the update. So in the command handler, create a new method called getCurrentCommandType, which will return the type of the current command. But our current command might be new, meaning there is currently no command on this character. So let's introduce a new command type called none, which we will return in case if our character have no command. Then back in player character input. In left mouse button hold command process, we will make a simple exception for interact command. So if player is executing an interact command, don't process the held of the left mouse button commands. Good, it works. Now let's test something I have been told that if you try to pick up items, it doesn't take the limits of the inventory into account. And I don't see any problem with it. Hey, let me know if you have any issues with the inventory in the comment below, and I will address them in the episodes to come. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured like those cool people you can see right now on the screen, or access to project files on Patreon. Let's add numbers to our pools of health and energy. Create text object on the pool object. Make serialized field for the object in the UI Poolbar component. And in the update, check if the text value is not null. If it is not null, Set the text to the pool values. Make the reference. Duplicate text for energy globe. And let's test this. If I manipulate my health pool, it should reflect the changes. 
Good. Let's sort our folders. Good, this is it for this episode. With best regards, see you in the next episode.